Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight to talk with artist Danielle Detweiler and Tiona Nikita McCowden in conjunction with Danielle's solo exhibition, Object Subject, Flaw is the Only Recourse, which is currently on view at QR Foundation through December 15th. My name is Jillian Carver and I am the Programs and Communications Coordinator at Q. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping notes. Live captions are available if you click the closed caption button at the bottom of the screen and select subtitles. You can also elect to view the transcript from the same menu that will show you more, more of the conversation at one time. The event tonight is recorded. If you're not comfortable with the possibility that your face and name may appear publicly, please turn off your video and rename yourself using an alias. Please keep your microphone muted during the presentation. This helps the audio quality for the group. If you have questions or comments, feel free to type them in the chat throughout the evening. There'll be a dedicated Q&A period at the end of the talk. Finally, this is a safe space. Please respect the voices and privacy of all presenters and attendees. Feel free to private message a Q staff member during the event if you'd like to discuss questions, concerns, or problems. We have Q in our username so you can easily identify us. Danielle Detweiler, Object, Subject, Ball is the Only Recourse. It's an, it's an exhibition that was selected through our artist nomination process. We have been honored to work with Tayona Nikita McLeodin as a nominator and a curator and mentor to Danielle Detweiler. Object, Subject, Ball is the Only Recourse consists of two bodies of work, a short film titled Chores and The Lentil Clarities, a series of 232 self-portraits. Together, these bodies of work explore the bell hook calls, the act of speech, of talking back, that is no mere gesture of empty words. That is an expression of our movement from, subject, from object to subject, the liberated voice. Danielle Detweiler is a multidisciplinary performance artist, filmmaker, and actor. Detweiler's award-winning experimental films work has been presented at the Jackson International Airport, Atlanta Film Festival, New Orleans Film Festival, and Oxford Film Fest. She has exhibited at Mint Gallery, White Space Gallery, Atlanta Contemporary Museum, and Spelman College Museum of Fan Fine Art Black Box series, amongst others. Tiona Nikita McLeodin is a visual artist, filmmaker, and curator whose work explores and critiques issues at intersections of race, gender, sexuality, and social commentary. McLeodin's approach traverses documentary film, experimental video, sculpture, and sound installation. Her work has been shown in the Institute of Contemporary Art, Philadelphia, the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum, MoMA PS1, New York, and many more. Now it's my pleasure to hand, off, hand it off to Danielle Detweiler and Tiona Nikita McLeodin. All right, y'all. Um, I'm Tiana Nakia McLaughlin, um, coming live and direct from Philly. Um, a little dog is shaking up in the background <laughs> just now. <laughs> With the uh, my dear, 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 dear friend, OG. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Bedweiler. Um, I think I, I, I think what I want to do is just talk about like, um, you know, I guess first the importance of what the Q. Um, Arts Foundation opportunity afforded this, you know, how that we got to this place, right? You know, Q Foundation being one that like taps um, artists and thinkers, scholars, uh, other creatives to possibly then come in and do these like curator mentorships. In this case, I wouldn't say that this is too much of a mentorship. And in the ways that it kind of comes up as a mentorship is just me like spilling the guts of like what it actually takes to do these kinds of shows like to Danielle in a particular kind of way based off of my own experience as a curator. But when I um, was given the invite to be a curator mentor for um, a solo show, I immediately, you know, I took a it took about a day, but I was like, no, this is like going to be Danielle. I'm going to ask Danielle to do this. We're not going to, we're going to forego the open call and see about what this would um, afford us. Danielle and I have been in conversation for what now? Like over 20 years. Over 20 years. About 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> met uh, freshman year. I was at Clark. She was at Spelman, just like the outcasts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one at Clark, one at Spelman. Um, was a dynamic force you know, in the first meeting was always interested and also kind of put me on 
to a lot of the theater, theatrical like arts because you know that's kind of like what um, you know I think it's important to say that Danielle's always occupied that space <laughs> even at an earlier time and then before that you know mm -hmm. um, and I was there coming to Clark Atlanta to be a filmmaker at the time I dropped out you graduated <laughs> and then oh, graduated. what <laughs> <laughs> graduated wow, wow. Graduated. yeah <laughs> but uh you know we've been in contact and we have a working relationship with each other as well so this is like not a first time meeting um danielle has gone on to do amazing amazing work in theater um you know performance art um and you know film as long as i know and then we also have a long going uh, relationship as uh, you know kind of a collaborator I say that oftentimes Danielle has been a muse of mine for my project Be Alarmed which is like 10 years in you know I happily now. serve I yeah. happily serve <laughs> but you know it's like it's 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 so it's an interesting you know um, opportunity for us to like really I think tonight just share with you all uh, what it actually took to do the show the makings and the structure and the intention behind the work that Danielle is doing. Because I think one of the things that I want to highlight before we really get into it is that oftentimes, um, you know, if you see someone like Danielle at this point, who's like big dog, films coming out back to back to back, <laughs> you know, the harder they fall, being the one that a lot of people have seen your magnificent role as Cuffy, which I feel like dominated the entire film, um, but in a great way. Uh, but thinking about artists who work in all these different forms, but also you having this dedicated, long-running uh, artistic practice that you do not take lightly, right? That's moving perhaps maybe at a different pace, but also moving at the right pace, right? So, um, you know, with that, I just want to kind of get into the conversation about, you know, I want you to talk a little bit more about your artistic visual art practice, your performance art practice, um, outside of this like film, uh, you know, an actress theatrical thing that people may know you for. Yeah, th th thank you, Tiana. Uh, Tiana is big dog number one. You know, when in, in school days, when they be like, big brother almighty, like, <laughs> 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 that's, how, that's how you roll when you talk to the gangster. So, but uh, yeah, and I'm live from Atlanta, um, uh, y'all. But just to, to dive into that, when you're an actor, right, you're trying to serve and be on these projects so heavily, you're chasing, chasing, chasing. And mm -hmm. that that is daunting unto itself, whether it's for theater, film, or television. And I knew that I needed to access something differently, um, to access a different kind of power, a different kind of control and influence over the things that I was actually doing. But it didn't, it didn't purely come from that. It came from something greater, something beyond moving uh, the way that my body and mind and spirit needed to, to, to move in order to, to, to be truly fulfilled, right? So it was coming out of this intuitive spiritual place, uh, like, you know, to be super, super personal and private, right? Like coming from this private space, I had a, an utter and complete like darkness breakdown, like things come through dreams, things come um, through, you know, physical, uh, bodily manifestations of something's not operating right. I know a lot of particularly black women who were like, or, and I know it's not just black women, but in, in talking to community, these things manifest in us. And if you do not heed them, they will continue to fester. And so, you know, it, it came, the work that I do now came from that. It comes from a very, very personal place. It comes from the, that privacy that, you know, that this, this show is working through. And and it's slower um, because you're always trying to chase the money, chase the money, chase the money. But this this allowed me to 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 breathe differently, to step back, to look at the totality of something. When you have something in your reins, you treat it differently, you care for it differently. You 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 get to get get a full 360 degree perspective. If you're just serving as an actor or talent. You know, they're, there's a, a tunnel that they put you in, that the production leaders put you in. I don't know if it's if it's malicious, if that's a, a, a kind of like a blinding, but they do. They want you to purely focus on the development of character. This is something else. This is, you know, this is standing in the big in the big eye and the little eye. This is standing in the big body and the little body. So, uh, you know, being able to move in that kind of way uh, has made me, I think. 
a more versatile human being, not just as a as an actor. I think it's brought a lot of humility to the way I step through the world. Um, um, and 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 it's concentrated and focused my abilities as as a, as an artist in general. So I'm able to be really concentrated in this more commercialized world and to be uh, and to understand the the breadth of what it means to 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 be um, to be an artist in general. And then over here, I, I I get to take my time. I get to 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 be truly collaborative in the way that I envision it or would hope for other uh, other other commercialized opportunities to be. So I get to synthesize. What does it mean to be over here? And okay, what does that look like here? And to 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 tackle topics and themes and real life shit that makes that that comes from a richer, darker, honest place. Mm -hmm. Straight up, yeah. yeah. So like you know, I think in thinking about uh, how we arrive to this like edit of sorts of like bringing mm -hmm. in these bodies of work. This is what I want to kind of mm -hmm. tap into now is you know i was i've been privy to the work that you've made but at the same time not like i find out sometimes about danielle's work the same way everybody fucking else does what you doing <laughs> yeah i just like see stuff and i'm like yo th what's going on like chores literally i just came across the time <laughs> when you shoot this can i get the link you know it's like she's very kind of to herself and the ways that I'm kind of to myself as well. Cause I think like one of these things as well is when you're doing this kind of work, you just don't always like have the time or you also yeah. want to create the space for your peers to be surprised. But in this case, you know, like chores was a film that I literally had to ask the link for. <laughs> she did not offer that up and I saw it and I was like, man, this is bug. This is like, I, I, I am so thrilled that you're also like making your own films and showing um, like kind of an experimental intersection of like performance, mm -hmm. uh, the way that you see film and thinking about how that can work in space. And then the lenticularities, uh, you know, <clears throat> as they existed in your uh, solo uh, presentation with Mint Gallery in uh, mm -hmm. Atlanta, um, seeing that work and wanting to actually isolate it. So that for being, you know, that being a part, one singular work in a larger body of work of yours, a proper presentation yeah. and coming to you and saying, hey, let's like pull that out and like give it a particular kind of space on its own. And then the um, Washer Women's uh, Manifesto, having that operate and figuring out how to have it operate in a different kind of way, which is going to be actually in takeaways in the magazine. Mm -hmm. But to go back, I want to kind of spend time on each work just to give people context. Um, if they've seen the show, if they're going to go see the show of what the arrangement of the work is. So I'm going to let you actually, I want you to talk a little bit more um, specifically about chores uh, first. And then, you know, I think I can talk about the ways of how it was like curated, how I laid it out in the space. Yeah, yeah. Okay, chores, <laughs> chores is, which can also be titled chorus, right? Mm -hmm. um, is coming from uh, me wanting to actually protect my body a bit more. Uh, just thinking like physically, I have been doing these live public art performances for like five years and, you know, just pushing the limits of the body. <laughs> and I was like, Dang, that that's not sustainable in the same way that it's not sustainable to be the kind of, you know, maternal figure, working class persons that a lot of black women are and me coming and us, you know, both of us coming from a southern context, you know, black women do every fucking thing. So that's, I mean, choruses and chorus slash chores is coming from that place of m me digging into the 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 impact of the domestic, the the impact it has on the body, on the mind. And where you go, you end up going um, when you've done this to yourself <laughs> and where you go after, right? Um, I've witnessed my mom and I witnessed my grandmother labor to the extreme. My mother, I, gosh, my mother's work at least 20, 30 different jobs from the deeply, deeply uh, domestic, you know, as a, as a maid or as a, uh, as a legal secretary. My grandmother worked in the chicken factory in uh, Athens, Georgia for 30, 35 years. Same, same thing, same, same thing. This, this constant 
you know, rote behavior uh, for others. And then this constant rote behavior of serving children, serving partners, serving family. I, I, I said, what is like, what is the, what does this do? Right. So I'm, I'm, and I was incapable of continuing to do it. Yeah. I, this shit's not working. It, it won't, it won't, it, it's not satisfying. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's debilitating. And so I like to test what that actually feels like on the body because acting doesn't necessarily give you that opportunity. There are limitations still, um, to, to the experience of doing something in a concentrated protected environment and then doing something that actually pushes you to have the truth of the experience and mm -hmm. so a day um uh, i had a very small crew worked with folks that i've worked with before um who are dear friends uh ebony blanding uh brandon williams um we 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 plotted over a long time and i dreamed a lot to come to this space of of wanting to test the body and wanting to do it in a very Atlanta uh, aesthetic and style, the uh, with regard to movement. So you know, if you've seen it, then you know this is the bank head mother bounce, bounce, <laughs> right? But it's also <laughs> like pushing the metaphorical, you know, weight of what it means to be a black woman and to carry everything on your shoulders. Um, and I'm always thinking in 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 a in a full spectrum uh, perspective. What does it mean to domestic? Uh, what does it mean to sexual? What does it mean to be in the middle? All of that is is converging for me because we have a tendency to be super respectful to this, this notion of the Southern black woman leading in the civil rights capacity. But then, you know, there's a blind eye to that person who's literally walking down the street doing that kind of service. Okay. And then there's only a value of this sexualized per person over here in the neon lights of, 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 you know, the, of the, of the, of the strip clubs, which I am an adamant, you know, supporter and uh, I will spend my money here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know these these are spaces that I was diving, dipping, and dabbing into both of them. It's like we get we have a capacity to hold these two things at the, in tandem, and then you know what is the impact of of people saying yes and saying no to you at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what this was. This was digging into into that, but stripping away everything. It's like what happens to you when you strip everything away dear woman, dear mother, dear, dear, mm -hmm. dear sexual goddess being, right? Like, what does that look like? And so I put myself in a place where, uh, where my power is questioned. Mm -hmm. What, like, <laughs> why do you do this? You're doing this because, because the, when the negative is removed, right? You know, when we talked about like sculpture, like, okay, exactly. you start sneaking away. And so, um, yeah, I, I got to a point where, where it does begin to question power. It's questioning how how do you continue when you when there is nothing when there is no one left to serve. Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. And so over the course of a day, we dug into this. It would just be take after take in different in the different rooms from the the, the dining room to the 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 kitchen to the uh the, to the bedroom to 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 converge the sexualized and the domestic to what does it mean to come out of that. How, what does it look like to to question that in the in in your body and your mind and your spiritual movements and your ritualistic movements and so there is a cleansing that begins to happen and a chaos a breakdown occurs and for me that is the beginning of coming out of uh of coming into a, a particular kind of wilderness mm -hmm. i think that chores is the invitation to the wilderness and mm -hmm. and and breaking down all of the, the the power dynamics that are internal and then the lenticularities begins to just exactly. proliferate all these flowers right exactly. yeah these flowers yeah. of self of you know avatars as you stated the other day right yeah, <laughs> yeah so, i was like so yeah so let's let's so from there like you know chores takes up an entire wall in the the space and that was like a choice um you know on our part is that that was going to have like a particular space um that was kind of magnified so that it would be this dominant figure and you know the lenticularities to all 232 of them that are also like um you know we'll get into like how you kind of came about that over the two years and some of the mm -hmm. things that went into that but 
to think about it curatorially, one of the things that I wanted to do in the space was allow them to be seen as this separate thing, but also like tied to this giant uh, particular kind of figure, you know, this is this kind of new figuration that you're, you know, presenting. Um, with chores, I've ta I, I talked to Danielle specifically. I mean, we had several talks over this period of time to try to figure out. It was therapy, y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of deep, deep, deep dives yeah. about like, what is this work? What does it mean to put these works in the space together? Um, what does it mean to uh, show something that I know has a, a hyper private and personal space to leave that private, but also to kind of figure out and build up the iconography of how this can exist as one thing, you know, within a space. And I think like, you know, one of the things that I realized and I, um, we shared in our talk, you know, chat yesterday was like how this figure in, you know, chores and course becomes is almost like, you know, this dominant main figure that all of these things come from. And as someone who's known Danielle for, for a very long time, and, you know, dare I say, maybe the formative years, right, mm -hmm. is that there's one thing that I, um, you know, know about her is that the core, or the ways that I've worked with you, the core way that you have, like, excelled is, like, through a certain kind of method acting, like, you lock in, and, 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 it, and then you stay in, these things, and then you have to like do your own process of coming out. And so in thinking about the figuration that you present in, you know, chores, course, as this, you know, figure that's very pointed, you know, it's, it's your body, you're pushing, pushing, the, the rigor, the labor, the exhaustion that's coming through that, um, it, and what it took to make that, and thinking then again about the lenticularities pulling from that in all 232, uh, as these kind of avatars of that figure, you know, kind of both mm -hmm. revealing more at their own pace, but also doing this weird, um, you know, extension and obscurification of this very like figure. So it continues this kind of like idea of all the various women that are within you, but also like the things that you try to hide and the things that you want to show. Um, you know, what I will say, like, I guess at this point is like, you know, to, to do this show, this is a show that was supposed to go up um, last year, right? And we were in different places last year. We Our yeah. schedules were <laughs> working in a different way. Um, you know, COVID, because I just like to acknowledge the reality of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, you know, when this work had to go up, Danielle was on set doing a mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to step in and like really take a, a, a larger role and install the show along with the help of the uh, art handlers and the staff at Q. But I handled every single one of the lenticularities, right? So I put every single one of those up on that wall um, with the assistance of the, you know, fixtures and things like that yeah, with the other yeah. folks. That is the first time I think that I've ever had that kind of intimacy. So there's like this individual like buildup of this this space. Um, it makes you know, me emotional. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's very, very, but I yeah. love the idea of the service, right? I mean, because, you know, this year, earlier this year, we had, you know, I had the presentation of uh, the Triple Deities in Philly that you, you know, um, have been part of this larger series of mine, Be Alarm. And so I think as a friends, as, as collaborators, and I spoke about this in uh, a, a talk that I did at Princeton recently about like what it means to actually do the exchange proper like as a collaborative you know like people who work with each other you work with me on my work what it means to step in and do this work and handle these things for you while you do your work elsewhere right to maintain the, you know the progress and i think that a lot of us have had to step up in those ways for each other um to do those things to make sure that we still stay on our tracks <laughs> and in this case it was a real it was a real moment of really handling i'm like i'm holding the papers i'm handling two years of work here, you know, that, you know, and so I guess in this way, I want to transition into talking about the lenticularities because I know, you know, uh, the things that came up with that, how you, how you made that work, the time and also the paper. We talked about this yesterday a little bit, but what those papers are, because this will be the first time that people actually really know what those papers are. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is, this is, it, the manifestation of, of the lenticularities is very much a part like thinking of the of the quote from bell hooks coming from this place of silence right it's 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 um just beginning 
it's just it's a just beginning when you're in the darkest of places and you know i'll just you know i'll keep hold that to myself because that's important to hold because we've talked about the the significance of privacy and obscuring um that which needs to be obscured but mm -hmm. just beginning right and 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 needing to 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 discover something that you have no clue of what you're needing to discover. I know I had the hardest time looking at myself. I am a person who has a difficulty with taking, had a had, at the time had a difficulty taking pictures, let alone taking pictures of myself, you know, in a culture that is deeply self uh, driven. And so I began to, to toy with it, to, to look at myself at my, at my worst, and to revise that. I've really been like over the past week thinking about that conversation between Kiese Lehman and, and Tressie about revision and, and revision as a, a life practice. And so that's, you know, in retrospect, what this became, it became a practice of revising, of looking at the self at, um, at this pivotal moment mm -hmm. and, and, and seeking, seeking something more, seeking something greater, being asked and called to look at it greater, and just using what's immediately around, right? And I'm in Dieta, we, we talk, I talk about her in the essay, right? Like, you're pulling from, uh, it's such an urgent work that you're, you're grabbing whatever materials that are, are, are immediate to you, whatever is nearest. And so I, that's just what I began with. It began with uh, literally my son's acrylics and, 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 and anything that was in the house, glue, hair, uh, uh, whatever was needed in order to shift, to begin to shift and think about myself and this person that I've printed on this inkjet paper sometimes from my mother from her workspace hey let me get like 50 of them you know <laughs> and she's like gladly you look troubled but here you go right <laughs> and so and i just took the time there were no true limitations in the beginning it's just go with it and i just i just listened and did whatever they asked me to do and then the language begins to build right the language comes from uh, uh, from taking in, you know, text, from taking in uh, the Black Girl in Search of God, from taking in uh, your work, right? And, and remembering, like, rememory is happening and saying, oh, yes, this is, this, this is happening in the background and this is something that is accessing a kind of pleasure uh, and apparel in the self, right? And, and, and so you just keep going and, and, and in thinking about these images and thinking about how I want to look like spiritually, not how I want to look aesthetically, yeah. how I want to look spiritually, that becomes, begins to come out. So you see the hints of, uh, of Yoruba, right? Cultural and, and wanting to be cool and telling the self, be patient cool uh 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 um, um you're a con you're you know like mm -hmm. and not a con in a negative you're a con what you're gonna do after that you know like there's there are hints of fragments of like of of, of prefixes and whole uh terms that are trying to conjure something else the language starts to build in 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 markings in in what is being written on the mouth or written in the forehead in the memory of of people who have influenced me from a, a dear, dear friend who died uh, uh, of HIV from South Africa, like from, from the formative years, mm -hmm. remembering how strong that person was mm -hmm. and coming from uh, the, the, the instant need to, the urgent need to work, right? Because on the back of some of the, the pieces are uh, uh, scripts, right? <laughs> and that, that would happen before the the coloring right yeah. uh, on the face I, everything is 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 this is this need to 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 put hands and texture on the making of this self i write everything i, I don't i don't audition uh from just you know printed script it has to go through my hands first that you know personalizes it 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 it, it charges the energy through the through the body and so just nothing is to be wasted so it's like nothing's to be wasted take that let's move through that right okay. uh and so that's these just kept coming kept coming kept coming um and i wanted to be this charged person that the yeah. black girl in search of god is she's bucking at every turn every institutional figure or somebody who feels definitive they are all you know largely patriarchal figures but to hell with that right and wanting yeah. to find that in my damn self 
Yeah. Not yeah. knowing that that's the charge, right? Like I can yes. be literate in that now. That's a legible statement. But before it's just just moving with the feeling. I go through the body first because dance was my first medium. So it's all, it just all started to come out and then it became a rigor and ritual practice of at least five a day or five, five in this particular day, five, five, using these materials. And the materials would shift maybe one at a time or something like that. But that that's how the language of these, these heads, these, uh, these lenticularities, aka perspectives of the self began to emerge. Yeah. And there's a thing that I love, um, you know, when in handling them and seeing the work and working through uh, just the language of them, that's included in my essay when we had, like, I actually included an ex excerpt of one mm -hmm. of our conversations where I'm like breaking down this, this kind of like the core ones that like affect me in a certain way. Yeah. Um, you know, the reveal of on the back of them, you know, I was reminded, of course, when I was installing, handling them and seeing the handwritten, you know, scripts, because this is like, you know, we talk about um, <laughs> language. So there's like two, there, in, in, in many of them, there's dual language in the paper, in the text. It's a dual text. There's the gesture of memorization, your, you know, as you, you stated to me uh, prior, of like how you actually memorize and how you take in the language that you have to perform, which is through writing these scripts mm -hmm. out to remember, right, on the back. The auditioning yeah. and the labor of auditioning, um, you know, for folks who may not know, you know, auditioning and, you know, sides, the scripts that you would, you know, kind of perform, you are doing an, an insane amount yeah. of, at this time. You're doing what? Like eight, 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 upwards of 80. 88 like, years. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and it like, became like that's this is what they were they were god right if i yeah. got a script sorry um this is all i have to do right and, and being yep. extremely focused there's nothing else that matters at the time I, I could you know you could be chilling drinking a brew next thing you know you get a, a email with the with the scripts uh and the audition is um sober up asap right to yep. to to there and begin that work because it can't it won't leave you it won't go away <laughs> yeah and so it's like this this thing that you have to kind of return to and the way that you process it is has to come through your own handwriting mm -hmm. and there's this beautiful moment which is why i love the series even though it's extraordinarily daunting <laughs> like for the space and even the install is really intense to like figure out how to put all of those up but yeah. um you know and to also the, the decision to put them up in a way that preserves the archival element of them. They're both works of art, but they are archival, uh, you know, like body of work, you know, um, with the plexiglass just on the wall with the pressure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's this beautiful, there was this beautiful moment of like, you know, really, uh, you know, and that was just like both materially, but just the textual element where I was able to see like, you know, there's language, this language I can read, but then this language I can read for my mm -hmm. friend. This is like, I'm looking and I'm seeing this new understanding of like also that this is something that is coming from a place and there's still this rejection of waste, right? And a moment where people will think that you have like the abundance, there still is this like, I'm going to still keep this paper and figure out how to process language in this way. Um, it's just a, such a, it's such a beautiful moment. I think I wanted the work for a certain reason and then when I was holding it it became <laughs> it became a whole different thing that like just blew me away because I was just like fuck this is really how you know you really got you know um you got something out real honest you know what I mean like you know yeah. like you got it honest you know what I mean I mean it's a big deal for, for like you talk about the pressure that it takes in the install for it to be to remain on the wall right and the plexiglass and you're doing the insertion of all of it right like you know I'm very it, it's not about like figures who are beyond us or who have passed. Mm -hmm. Like the legacy is really, really important. But the people that are in proximity, right? We have um, yeah, a, 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 a value unto yeah. each other. And so when I think about that pressure, I think about, you know, us having worked together for so long and you pushing me to yeah. keep going in a particular kind of way. And anytime you go, Oh shit! What you you doing this? Oh okay then. And so for you to be able to handle them, out nobody else has handled them outside yeah, of yeah. me, 
right? And so it just it's just a value in 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 the diligence because that's just how you are, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it it just felt like you were in the room even though you know you were away. And also, I mean, because we're coming at a certain time point, I want people to be able to ask questions and stuff yeah. uh, for you. Yeah. Is that this this all happens? Right, like, because last year it, you would have been there, right? You would have been there. We probably would have shared the weight of putting them up together, right? Um, but now during this time, you, you, there was no way for you to be here because you were playing Mamie Till. Yeah, I you was, know, like on, it, on heavy. You, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like you, you were embodying, and you were on set, and you were in a place where it was very different from or maybe even all of the other. Uh, films that I've known you to go through where you can check in and do whatever. It's like, no, you have to kind of be in this place. And our, our exchanges were very particular. You know, I took on the load of like the conversation. I'll send you to briefings at a certain time, very sporadically to kind of respect the lock-in that I knew that you were in. But there's also this, this, this moment where, and I'm ha handling these images of you. I'm also understanding that you are handling the one of the the more an image of someone else yeah of someone else yeah. in a very particular way yeah. an image that has colored the dynamic of our our where we come from as southerners you mm -hmm. know what i mean these are the things mm -hmm. that we 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 carry and it was like the utmost like i like you know i was like doing my work at night and i was like oh about by you during the day yeah i mean that's why the pressure thing is so heavy it's yeah, heavy yeah, but yeah. like we allow ourselves to push and be pushed and you just it's everything is yeah, temporary everything is temporary felt, and, uh, it felt raw because i was like yeah. you know there's there's there i know there's fissures and there's breaks during this kind of a handling of that particular figure you have to do a certain performance that is a one that we think we know of right yeah. you have to process and put this uh particular kind of figuration for the first time ever in a real way uh mm -hmm. to to the fore during a production with your director and your team and so um you know i guess i want to just use this uh, this uh, you know time to acknowledge also like the amount of uh work that you have going on and what this what this how, how special it is to have this work that is like the truest self and the selves of selves of selves of selves of selves, right? Wow, all of these different images of you are coming out during this particular time where there's the harder they fall, yeah. station 11, yeah. you know, the da da da. It's just like, it's just wild like, wow. to, you know, and, and all those kind of um, uh, presentations and figurations of, you know, you know, your character, Cuffy, it, yeah. that, that's, Major. you know what I mean? like, like, you know like these these particular kind of historical figures that you are carrying on your back right now and, and we have an opportunity you know i have the opportunity to walk in and see you and i'm good with that pressure like okay. that's the kind like it's some pressure you take you know yeah. some pressure you take and you have to like in order yeah. to be the most full self and I, I think we're all just exploring that. I mean, like there's a grave amount of pressure that you're undertaking as an artist unto yourself and as a curator. And as just like, I think it's like a, it's a human being thing, the humanity of ourselves trying to uh, squeeze the, the greatest, uh, the purest, right? It's the clarion butter. We done cooked that shit down. And now wow. this is the best shit you could possibly get. You bought this on your sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay yeah so it's like this time right now showing up doing this shit and like really understanding there's a real opportunity so i'm you know with that i'm just gonna like put it over to the questions because i'm like i just want people yeah. to know like the opportunity we have you know what you have right now is rare and it's an opportunity to go see you know danielle um at her core and to also see the variations of um who she wants to present as um, with also knowing that it's still, it's still so private and it's still like, you know, hell, you know, you still have yourself in the midst of all these different figurations, the things that we feed off the entertainment and all this other stuff. I think it's like, you know, it, it, if anything, I want to implore you, if you haven't seen the show yet to go and see like someone who's delivering themselves with them, their own hand, um, like the authorship of self, you know what yeah. I mean? In the the midst of self. So yeah, I guess it's a good time to open up to questions. Yeah.
Thank y'all for being here. How about that? <laughs> we we'll rolling through. They said, I'm like, mm. Mm-hmm. what is it? The chat. I'm in the chat now. Let's see. We in the chat. We in the chat. If anybody got some questions, okay. Let's see. All right. It's a new message down here. I'm always, it's always somewhere. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, lady. <laughs> thank you, lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, if anybody has some questions for, um, you know, Danielle, now while we have her, we're going to try to get out of here just like for respect of everybody's time by seven. But if it's you have any, I know everybody. Yeah. <laughs> just send it, send it on through right. and um, we'll get through <laughs> it. But yeah, you know, in the meantime, you know, thank you everybody for showing up. And if you haven't been able to see the show, please go see it. Um, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's something that is like, you know, a huge, huge moment, just as much as, you know, I think people think oftentimes that these things are like uh, a big, big thing for the artist, you know, like the artist and then the curator, whatever. It's a really big deal for me to be able to kind of like do this kind of work for someone um, who has done a particular work for me. Let's see if this, uh, raise a hand. Dr. Lodge. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, oh. go ahead. Uh, Veronica just asked, where can we see images of the lenticularities online if not able to get to Q? Um, just, hmm. They aren't hosted online uh, in mass. They're, a few of them are presently on my IG, on Q's IG, if you want to get a gist of what that experience is. Additionally, there's a trailer on my IG. Everything is public, right? And that trailer, uh, uh, it, it quickly, in the, in, the, in the vein of like the still images becoming movement, uh, they show you them really quickly so you can get a gist of all 232. Mm-hmm. So if you if you go the, there, you can access a hint of them, but uh, the majority of them are not online. Yeah. Let's go to Dr. Elijah. Nicholas. Hey. <laughs> hey, thank you. It's, it's so good to be here. Thank you both for um, this this great talk back. Um, I just have a comment and, and then a question. You know, I met Danielle several years ago. Uh, before I understood what art was other than art class in elementary school. And she and I were two of the only black and brown people in the play that I had no idea about. And she actually taught me how to read a script and how to memorize. So I want to just say thank you. And actually, when I met Danielle, I met her as a former person. I'm a black Mm -hmm. trans man. And so I met Danielle um, as a female. And I share that because I haven't seen Danielle in years. I don't own a TV. And so I didn't know she was doing everything that she is, (laughs) right? And so when I had the opportunity to recently watch um, The Harder They Fall, um, it was so... um, Yes, emotional is the best word for me, watching your character, not just because it was you, but because it's such a powerful character with messages without words. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for the writer, for you playing this role. And I just really want to say thank you. And I feel like it's a, a beginning of something very, very, very significant. And what better person to see uh, in this role than you? So I just want to humbly say thank you. And I cannot wait to see this piece. Thank you, Elijah. I mean, I I have to say, you know, you dove, right? I I think you're the the manifest, like pre me diving into the, all of the things that I was going through. or, or in the midst of it, right? You were a figure who was modeling that, right? You're diving into these unknown worlds in your life, in who you sought to become. There is no book, right? There is no, no outline to manifest a liberated voice. There is no outline to go from object to subject. And so it was, you know, you were teaching me in the same vein, right? And, and, I'm, and I'm grateful for you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Great. We got a um, question from uh, Bryn, writer, 
Brand. Yeah, you gotta y'all gotta get the uh, catalog. It's a free, beautiful catalog. I don't have it with me, but it's like this. It's nice and big. And uh, Bryn uh, provided an amazing, amazing like uh, po poem uh, prose piece uh, in conversation with Danielle uh, that you should read. And Bryn says, what guidance would you have for others who may want to document their personal change over time, whether through art or writing or another medium? You are so disciplined and yet so free. Thank you both for this uh, thoughtful conversation. Thank, Thank you, you Bryn. Thank you so much, Bryn. Y'all gassing me. Yes, gas, <laughs> give her all the petrol. Uh, <laughs> that's what they used to say in the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I just I, to 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 flow to say yes to just about everything and to be okay with being a clown. Um, I feel um, flimsy often in diving, and you know because nothing about this is 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 expert, right? The self is is not um a given you're dealing with so much stuff you're dealing with the legacy that you know with with hints and nuances to it that you don't you don't quite understand my mother and my grandmother are you know at least 20 they're 20 figures as a part of the lenticularities because they are things that get attached to you that you don't have a true control over and so you're trying to navigate through that right like you're you're you just have to allow yourself to to tackle the the things that are known about you and to be completely okay being led into the unknown about you and then and synthesizing that as you go along i i think that's the the richest thing i could say and to be okay with like literally the everyday mounting of some some minute quality of who you are i i'll share this too i write my dreams like every night as much as i possibly can the most the it could be the shittiest little thing like i woke up one time and the word was obscura right like that's just a term that was like magnified at the end of the dream or somewhere somewhere in there but that those kinds of things um allow me to be my own prophet mm -hmm. And, I, and and allow me to keep going forward. Uh, yeah. And I don't have like these terms are they come to me. They aren't a part of it as you're doing it. Just go with it, and and it will and you'll speak back to yourself at some point. But go with it. go with that. Big 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 word right there. Yeah. All right, we got um, another question. Pam Shepherd. Pam, what up? Pam, what up? What up? <laughs> oh, gee. As you were exploring this inner work, at what point did you know that you wanted to offer this as a show? Um, at no point did I assuredly know that it was going to be a show. At no point, even getting to, uh, I think it had to have been like in 20, maybe 2019, late 2019, early 2020. I was like, oh, okay, I have something to do. I have this show to do. And so I will make be more be vulnerable as possible with this but along the way it's just do it. it 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 has no exhibition intention or it had no exhibition intention until i began to be okay with this elementary quality of self building into this more refined self which is what you know i so appreciate tiana for being like yeah 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 let's look at that shit and see this next self uh, let's see how they emerge because there are some I'm super, super insecure about because that was the beginning. And the beginning of them feels, it's difficult to look at because they allow more to be seen in a certain way. And as you move forward, there is a, a different security of, uh, and a different refinement of how they begin to, 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 to reveal themselves. So yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't say we showing until, you know, to maybe six months before they were shown. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's right, yeah. Shout out to yeah. Pam. Amazing, amazing. Love you so much. Amazing. Next okay. one from Lady Sasha Jones. OG as well. They all up in here. I'm so excited. It's like my family. Um, it's a, she says, I would love to know a little bit more about how you both approach collaborating on this project, what you were able to learn, deepen, or shape shift through working together in this context, especially knowing a bit about your past collaborations and the trust that exists in the space between you two. Um, well, I mean, I've said it several times, but I mean, like, I think this is a chance for me just to maybe speak a little bit more. It's like, this is a chance for me to work for Danielle. 
you know, like to, to, to happily serve in a very particular way, because like, um, you know, Danielle, Danielle's known me in my year year. So she, if people want to know who I am and how I've been, <laughs> this is like one of the people you go talk to and she go tell you. And I ain't gonna tell you nothing. <laughs> she, she'll tell you, she'll tell you the truth. And, and so like, um, when I decided like the film stuff, and it's a weird thing, cause it's like the film thing that I was really about and deciding to leave that, Danielle is the person that allowed me to be able to do that at a particular level of quality with her support in playing the Hank, which is like this, you know, long going thing with the alarm part that, you know, Lady had a hand in as well as uh, my very first curator as ever. Like, I can't let you slide without people knowing that, like Lady was the first curator that took a chance on me with this work. And um, so the opportunity in this way where, you know, like there's this thing about, you know, Muse. And I, when I say someone is, a, you know, Muse and I don't have many, but like, it's not the, uh, 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 with the disrespect or the use thing that I think a lot of people like, you know, just to use. It's someone, I'm at the feet, you know what I mean? Like a teacher, uh, a person that, you know, you, you think you know what you're doing and you're saying, can you do this for me? And then they show you what you, you didn't even know to think about type shit. You know, uh, my relationship with Danielle as a, a collaborator, um, as we like continue this collaboration and collaborate on other things is one that is like, you know, an oppor this opportunity was a, a chance to fully articulate uh, what it means to kind of serve and what it means to serve the museum, but what, what it means to also like be at the foot really and um, yeah. to be able to like, you know, curate in the core basic elements of it, care, you know, true care, wanting to like doula this, this work, you know, like, you know, put it in this way and provide this kind of like solo presentation to show people, um, you know, who I know her to be, but also the, the power of the work. Cause it's like, there's work here, you know, there's like who you are and then there's the work and having the chance to try to bring a lot of the things that I've learned around curatorial practice, around art exhibition and, and taking a chance. I, I told Danielle, I was like, you gave me the chance to do probably one of the more punk installs <laughs> ever. <laughs> Cause it's like, it just like has this like kind of energy that reminds me of Atlanta when we was like really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just, it's like a beautiful opportunity. I think for me, that's why I say like, it's, I learned so much and I uh, gained so much from this, like having to like perform and execute and care for in the basic and the more crucial elements of the work not just this theoretical like frou-frou you know the writing the writing came easy you know the the work and and doing that labor and showing up in your stead in that way was really a, a great opportunity because you have given me so much you know what I mean over these years uh, and really believed in me um, in these places where that were so early that I didn't even know what I was really trying to do. So, um, no, yeah. it's a pure mutuality, right? Like you, you, I mean, I, I think Tiana models a lot of different things for a lot of different people. I've, you know, just uh, the folks who I know who, you know, that's who we've spoken about and really magnificent works are folks who understand what, who learn what discipline is through you, who learn what true care is. Um, you know, I had a dream and I've told you this, I had a dream that you helped me, you know, that you were some kind of, you know, figure that was carrying me through something. And this was beef. For, this was before uh, uh, before this was announced. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and I, I, I think several months before this was announced. So, you know, it might have been before you were even thinking about having to process who or uh, who, would, who would receive it or whether mm -hmm. you would do an open call. So, you know, it's, it, it's all super spiritual um, occurrences. And, and vibrations that are heavy and move in a, in a certain way. And it's, you know, I think about, you know, the Black women, uh, folks who who model what that looks like for us, Tony with, you know, uh, uh, Tony Cade and all of like, mm -hmm. this is a kind of going and buying groceries for my girl and her babies. Thing, exactly. You know, yeah. this, would, this is what that feels like. And it, like that core thing that has to come out. I know this has to come out of you. 
and I'm, I'm gonna serve you in the best way possible. And so I think we've, we've learned to set even more into that um, and, and to be true to it. And so mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to you. And to push it, push it further. Push it. And this is um, the last question uh, so for the sake of time. It's from Colleen Gardner. I know Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> Kobe was on on uh, on. Uh, she was on till with uh, me and and worked in BTS. Beautiful, beautiful Kobe. Kobe was like. Kobe wants to know: Is there a difference in your process and transforming into different characters in performance art versus film? Yes, yes. the mm -hmm. The performance art takes a lot longer than film and TV does. Um, um, because I know that there's going to be an engagement with audience in some kind of way, uh, because it's also deeply intuitive. Um, um, yeah, those are those are the elements that really drive, and and it's 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 deeply spiritual too. You know, it's coming from that place. Film and TV have a different kind of uh, research and rigor to them because I know I'm I'm serving someone someone else's uh intention though it is infused with mine it 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 uh the calculations are a bit more uh, rigid I would say the boundaries uh staying in a certain boundary so that it feels a certain way I mean it is you know the this is the medium right and it's gonna mm -hmm. live here and has to have a particular kind of intimacy performing arts is just driving something else it can be as big or minute as, as it needs to be and i need to be able to drive through each and every one of those and mm -hmm. and so um yeah yeah but yeah. who knows i mean i, I don't want to like bound it it may be something else next go around yeah sure but they all call for uh discipline Yes, elegant. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we talk about that all the time. Elegance. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank y'all. We're gonna end. This has been a great opportunity to chop it up. Really talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this beautiful, beautiful exhibit. If you haven't been able to um, check it out, please go check it out. Uh, pick up a um, catalog. They are free. You know, Q is a, a lovely um, organization, uh, especially in the midst of this like art world capital of New York, where they give you, uh, you know, an, they give a catalog, they provide a catalog with all their shows, it is free to the public. Um, so I do encourage you to go see um, and, and pick one up or two for your people yeah. as a document of the show. It's a beautiful show. It's going to be up until I think December 16th, 15th, 15th. 15th. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, check it out. Thank you all for coming through. Thank you so much, Danielle. And, um, you know, onwards and upwards, all this good stuff. <laughs> forward, <laughs> forward, forward. Thank you, everybody. All right. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs>